Enabling or disabling circular logging is actually a pretty easy task. Understanding what circular logging is, that's the more difficult side to this. Well, as you know from the discussion on storage architecture, transaction logs continue to build and build and build as more and more mail comes into your mailbox database. And so as that mail goes into the database, the database expands, of course, it gets larger, but so do those transaction logs. And so in certain situations, it's not often, but in certain situations, you may want to enable circular logging, which basically means that the logs are overwritten, the transaction logs. Once the data within the log file has been committed to the database itself, the logs are overwritten. Now it's easy to see how this would save you quite a bit of disk space, but you would have to realize that if your database corrupts in some way or the disk holding the databases crashes, then you're not going to be able to recover up to the moment where you failed through your transaction logs. So you'll only have your backups. And in certain situations, that may be okay with you, especially in situations where you're not overly concerned about recovery, you're more concerned about disk space. So by default, circular logging is disabled because logically most of the time you want those transaction logs. But if you need to enable circular logging, you do it on the storage group level. So here we have a storage group. If we right click the storage group and we go to properties, notice there's not much in terms of properties of a storage group. You get a little bit of information and you get the ability to change the name here. But to enable circular logging, you just click the little checkbox here and you say OK. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you found that helpful. And I'll see you in the next lesson.